in the league in, uh, if he can get the ball to burn. So uh, somewhere along the line, I think, before this game is over, we're going to have to see one or both of these teams take to the air at least a little bit. Well, Burns has caught 19 passes this year, and he has been a formidable target. Tony just has not gone to him uh, that often, as uh, perhaps uh, they might have, as they've elected, of course, to run, keep the ball on the ground. So one of the keys is uh, Coney's a solid defense, Gardner a, a fairly solid defense, and, of course, uh, Gardner's ability to throw the football. Gardner's receivers are big. Both Dorsky and Warren, the two favorite receivers, go 6'4", and... Uh, Coney's uh, defensive backs are relatively small, 5'7", five, 5'10", five, in that area. So Gardner uh, would have sort of an advantage uh, in that respect. But Tony has a good defensive backfield. They have uh, their safety, maybe one of the best safeties in the league, in Tiger Hatch, the senior. And he is uh, one of the top tacklers on the team. Coney also, their fortunes have sort of uh, risen with the... Uh, appearance of Mark Dameron as he moved in at quarterback after the fourth game, replacing Dave Foreman, and the sophomore has really done a great job. In fact, uh, I don't think the Rams have been beaten since uh, Dameron took over the controls. So they have come on. The Coney lost their first four games, but really, uh, you look who they played in those first four games, Mount Blue, Lawrence, Winslow, and Waterville, and uh, you can understand why they, they would have gone 0-4 at the beginning of the year. Well, they, they, they played all of the top teams in, in the Northern Division. And uh, the, Ram the Rams have been in ball games this year that have been, uh, the majority of them have been very close ball games. Uh, not, you, don't, you haven't seen a lot of points scored in, in any of their ball games. Uh, I guess maybe the Winslow game and uh, Mount Blue, the first two games of the season, uh, were where they gave up the bulk of their points. And since then, they've been very stingy. Okay, the Coney cheerleaders on the field going through their routine in the pregame. We're about a few minutes away from the opening kickoff, and we'll be back with Coney Gardner, the 108th renewal of the traditional classic, this time from Hope Field and Gardner, after this message. presents fruits and vegetables so remarkably fresh, so naturally sweet, they almost speak for themselves. Shaw's, the time is ripe. Let Letter Systems in Hollowell guide you step by step through the printing process. They help you design and create a letterhead or business forms which are a true reflection of your company. Letter Systems uses state-of-the-art equipment to provide the best quality, from posters and pamphlets to business cards and wedding invitations. And for your copying needs, there's the Copy Stop. Offset quality at photocopy price. High tech, high speed, high quality. The best people and equipment are ready to help you at Letter Systems Incorporated of Hollowell. Hamburger that's made fresh, or B, one made earlier so it's dry. B, it's like mom's. I remember she'd make dry roast beef, dry gravy, cake, but most people don't like dry food. Yeah? Maybe that's why dad left. <laughs> most people like the taste of hot and juicy hamburgers, like Wendy's, the best burgers in the business. Wendy's makes a great gift for the holidays. Wendy's gift certificates, good year round. A booklet of 10 is just $5. Now available at participating Wendy's. Now the Gardner High School Band with our national anthem.
Well, once again, it's that time of year as Gardner County, this time at Hope Memorial Field in Gardner. And this time, it's not only the rivalry, but the Southern Division Championship at stake. As the winner, should it be Gardner, would go on to the uh, playoffs against the second place team in the Northern Division. If it's Coney, they have to rely on Bangor defeating Oxford Hills this afternoon in another important uh, Pine Tree Conference game. But both of them, of course, has a shot at winning this game and moving on. Definite in the case of Gardner, should they win. Coney needs a little help from Bangor for them to be able to move on. Well, Gardner's in the situation where they'd like to be. Their destiny is in their own hands. Coney has just half of their destiny in their hands, and they have to win this game today to go on uh, next week into the playoffs. Uh, well, there's a strong possibility that Bangor would, should be able to beat Oxford Hills, although you never know. But you I think it's a very definite <laughs> possibility at Bangor. You never know. High school football. Harvey and LeClaire, two of the three captains out at center of the field for the coin toss. Greg Burns, uh, Faconi, and Art Higgins, their captain. Be a little strange today to see Art Higgins wearing number 27 and not uh, 32 as he has all all season. I don't know the reason, do you? No, I don't. And that, that is unusual in that he would want to change jerseys after wearing. Well, Gardner won the toss, but they elected to uh, defend the goal to the left and take the wind in the first quarter. But I do believe they won the toss. Coney will receive. Gardner preferred to take the wind rather than uh, the ball. The officiating crew for this uh, big rivalry game today, Frank Barkley is the referee. The umpire is Jim Arsenault. Arnold Ricker is the headlinesman. The line judge, Jeff DeBlois. And Howard Annis is on the clock here at Hoke Field. So Coney will get a chance to handle the football first. And Coney's uh, premier return man, Tiger Hatch, number three, will be uh, the deep man for the Rams in the middle. And there's a good chance he'll get the football as Gardner will kick off with a trailing wind of maybe 10 to 15 miles per hour. So we noticed in the warm-up buzz that uh, kicking with that wind made a definite difference, both of the place kicks and especially the punts. You could definitely, definitely see a difference. Kicking off for Gardner, number 86, Tom Tedeschi. Well, as you could hear Sam Shaw, the PA announcer here at Hoke Field, Tom Dorsky, number 86, will kick off for the Tiger. John O'Brien is... Uh, to the right of Tiger Hatch, he's number 37 on the receiving unit. And also number 22, Mike Vashon to his left at the 10. And the ball fell off the tee. Well, I don't know if we've had a shot of the crowd here, but uh, we, the crowd is completely ringing the field. And it's, uh, of course, the bleachers on the far side, the visiting Coney bleachers are more than filled up. And uh, even the banking in back of the visiting side, a lot of out in the people out there watching from the cheap seats. Got the nickel seats, right? <laughs> and this side is really packed, so we got an excellent crowd here. Short kick. Ball loose and uh, covered at the 31 yard line by Coney. Stacy Lund, uh, first one down to make the tackle as uh, uh, number 30, Aaron Cludia, uh, took the short kick. So Coney uh, starts with pretty good field position at the 31 yard line. Coney offensive lineup. Dorsky shanked that one. He, uh, he didn't get all of that kick. Mark Dameron's the quarterback. Uh, Carey goes to Carraz, former tackle that came on to play fullback and do a good job. And he slashes up the middle for four. Don Jewett made the play for the Tigers defensively. It's a second down and six. We get four on the play. Ball is just over the 35 yard line. Looking at that Coney offense, uh, Devin, Devin Saban is the power back. Carraz the fullback who just carried. And Art Higgins is the tailback wearing number 27 today. Give it to Carraz again. He gets maybe a yard. And uh, once again, Jewett is there for the Tigers. So Don Jewett making a couple of plays in this uh, early series. Gain of two. It'll be a third down, four to go. Ball is at the 38-yard line of Coney. Up front, uh, 
for the Rams, Greg Burns, number 88, is the right end. Don Gold on the left end, Dave Meager and Sean White of the tackles. And Mike Nashi and Dave Coleman of the guards, as they have been all year long. Cameron, the sophomore quarterback, to Burns on the slant end. It was overthrown and uh, didn't take them long to go to their primary receiver, the big tight end. Greg Burns. Burns was partially open, but the ball was thrown a little bit behind him. It would have been a miraculous catch if he if he could have pulled that one down. So Tony operating against the wind, and keep that in mind as Dave Coleman goes back to kick with the line of scrimmage at the 37-yard line. Plenty of time to get the kick away, and you can see the wind holding that kick up. And it takes a... Uh, Gardner bounce, and the ball is at the 45-yard line. So that's only a 23-yard kick, a 22-yard kick from scrimmage, and the Tigers find themselves in excellent shape at their own 45. Well, we saw Coney come out in the first two plays, give the ball to Perez uh, instead of Higgins. See what the Tigers do. They split Dorsky wide out left side, and uh, on a slot inside him is Harvey. Up the middle, straight ahead, goes Bergeron. Bergeron uh, cracked for about seven. Devin Saban, you'll hear his name a lot, makes a tackle for the Rams. He had 98 tackles this year. One of the top uh, defenders in the Pine Tree Conference. Both coaches read the same book. Working the middle uh, early and uh, worked to the Tigers' advantage that time. Time to give the Bergeron run again. First down, yard is at the 40 to the 37. Gain on the play of 11 and a first down. Eric Smith had to uh, come over and make the tackle from right corner. The guy in our offensive uh, unit. Dorsky and Warren in the ends. McLaughlin and Steve Nyes are the tackles. Stacey Lund and Tim Malcolm the guards. Blair Tinkham is the center. LeClaire. As always, the tailback, Bergeron, the fullback, and the wingback, Cyril Harvey. Straight ahead goes Bergeron, third uh, straight carry. Andy Bergeron, the carry for fullback. Picked up by number 57, Dave Meager for Cody. I'll give him three. It'll be second down seven as Meager, the defensive tackle, made the play for the Rams. The hole was there. He just got Eight tipped up going now, right at the line of scrimmage because he, he had a hole and could have got deeper into secondary. Glenn Gervais, Sean White, Mark Malcolm, Bruce Rollins, Dave Mega, Dan Paul, and the defenders in that six-man uh, line for Koenig. Mark Malcolm, the defensive right tackle, makes the uh, play on LeClaire. After a couple, it'll be a third down and six to go for the Tigers. The line of scrimmage now at the 33-yard line of Koenig. Gagner with... Excellent field now, but they have a big down and six play. Linebackers for Coney are Greg Burns and Devin Saban. John O'Brien are loose in the backfield, covered up by the quarterback, Rob Sternett. We got flags. Flags are down and a loss on that play of about seven yards. Let's see what the call is. It's going to be a procedure against Gardner Motion. Start. So it'll be a third down, 11. Bring up a third down and 11. First passing situation and Harvey is a wing uh, wide to the right side. Looking off off, and he has first down yet. Nice catch by Brett Warren, his 14th reception of the year, 14 and a first down. Uh, Warren lined up on the left side, Buzz, and cut it across uh, the secondary and was Martin picked it off. Well, Gardner's passing game could make a, uh, could be the difference in this ballgame. Straight ahead goes uh, Jim LeClaire to the 23. Sean White on the tackle along with Burns, also the tackle. On a windy day, it's better for the passer to keep the ball down if he can because uh, a gust of wind can make a ball sail if it's thrown by Rob Sternett. Second down and eight from the 23 for the Tigers. On the right side, slanting inside the key. O'Brien had to come up from the corner. John O'Brien to make the tackle. Second down and four. Iconi and have been on the move since then. Big third down and four play for the Tigers. 
Up lumber, Hinch Yard Supermarket. LaClaire straight up the middle, breaking tackles, and he's clipped. A 17-yard burst up the middle as LaClaire found himself in daylight. And the Tigers are knocking at the door now, inside the one. Now we've seen some crisp blocking for the Tigers, uh, Buzz, on this first drive. They have. LeClaire. LeClaire over the top for the touchdown. So Jim LeClaire from a yard away with 6 one to go in the first quarter. Tigers take the lead. Good job by the Gardner offensive line as Gardner was in, of course, the big pass play to Brett Warren for 14 yards to keep the drive alive on the third and 11 play. The good turn it on the hold, and the Rams lead it by a, uh, Cohen, the Gardner leads it rather by a score of seven to nothing. We'll be back after this. Helping people. That's what Gardner Savings Institution, FSB, has been doing for over 100 years. But not of when the bank was founded in 1834. Saving certificates, IRAs, even checking accounts that give you access to your money and still pay a favorable rate of interest. They will help you. Gardner Savings Institution, member FDIC, offering safe savings for over a century and a half. What would you rather be doing? Yes. Make the right choice. Two sharp typewriters. If you get a hundred dollars off for this and also a hundred dollars worth of ribbons free. Joey and Ryan recommend departing. Well, that was a 55-yard drive by the Tigers as they took over. First, it was the fullback, Andy Bergeron, doing the bulk of the work, and then uh, there, the top tailback in the league, LeClaire, took over from about the 30-yard line in. On the return, his hatch gets uh, some daylight, gets out to the 39. Nice return by Tiger Hatch off Dorsky's kickoff. Mark Cloutier on the tackle on the uh, coverage team. So Coney will go to work at their own 39-yard line. Once again, Buzz, a good field position after the kickoff. It was, and that was an impressive drive by the Gardner Tigers. Gang tackled maybe a couple of yards. Those Higgins, Warren, the defensive left end, first man to get there to uh, hold him up. The player came out of the secondary off the left corner also. And his second down, eight to go, gain of two, ball at the 41. Gardner's defense is Blair Tinkham and Brett Warren at the defensive end. Greg McKenzie and Don Jewett at the defensive tackles. Craig Marshall at the nose guard. Bergeron and Harvey, the inside backers. Cameron's going to keep the ball. Cameron has first down. And he's in the Gardner territory at the 47-yard line. Mark Hudson over to make the tackle along with uh, Jim LeClaire. Number seven, Mark Hudson, and number 32, Andy Bergeron. That'll be enough for Coney first down. Well, Mark Damon, the uh, Coney quarterback, the sophomore, rolled out and there was nobody there to stop him as he picked up the first down and then some. Gain of 12 yards in the first down. Split wide left side is Golden. They give it to Higgins. Higgins, a uh, couple of moves inside and gets uh, about four yards. It'll be a second down, six to go. Harvey, the inside backer on the spot. On the guy in the defense, Mark Hudson at the corner, left side, or right side. And Jim LeClaire on the left side. Hudson, the uh, Roboback, rather, and Clutie are on the corner. And then Dave Linton, number 42, is the safety. Once again, the rollout, stopping and throwing. Left side, almost intercepted. Mark Cloutier almost picked it off. It was intended for Devin Saban at the Gardner 30, as you can see on the near sideline. Against the wind, and you can see the wind hold that one up. And Cloutier moved in to try to pick it off. Cloutier intercepted a couple of passes this year. One of them that went for him. Good play by Saban to uh, keep that from being intercepted. Right. This time they hand to Higgins. Higgins uh, with some daylight on the right side. He's going to be very close to first down yardage. Good, good second effort. 
effort by uh, Higgins. The official time out for measurement. Hudson uh, on the stop. Looks as I had it by the ball, but... Well, it's going to be short by an inch. <laughs> Bring up a fourth down in about an inch. Fourth down in an inch. Now, his clock time, we'll see. In fact, it's very small in the interior. Can wedge out to that kind of defense. And McKenzie in the middle. Guy to now moves into a front of the line. That'll be a first down. So the Rams on the move. They started at their own 30, or a Tiger had 30 yards. leads the offense out over the ball. Done a good job coming on since uh, Mark Malcolm has suffered the broken finger. Keeping his Dameron, and Dameron has uh, about six shots as he gets inside the 30 to the strategy of letting Dameron carry the ball a lot in this game. Rollouts, and that time uh, as he went off tackle for the Rams. It is. A couple of times he's rolled first uh, right and then left, and each time he's so Dameron figures very prominently in this offense here on the ground. Higgins is shy of the 25. It'll be the 26, and it'll be very close to the first down, and we may have our second measurement of this drive. 2.35 to go in this second quarter. Game brought to you in part by the Lettuce Systems, and also Wingate Lay the Oil. Happy to be among your sponsors for the guy. For 95 years, they've been going at it. Higgins into the secondary to the 16-yard line. LeClaire to make the hit. And that'll be a first down, a pickup of about 11. Well, uh, Buzz, that uh, Coney offensive line is punching some holes in there. A few new wrinkles, and they've given them something to think about. This time, straight dive over the right side to, to uh, Saban. He oh, might have the 15-yard line. That'll be a gain of two. It'll be a second down, eight to go. Don Jewett down at the bottom of the pileup again for the Tigers. Golden on now as a wide receiver. Second down, eight to go at the 15-yard line. Minute 18 to go, first quarter. Cutting inside the blocking, but coming over hard is LeClaire to make the hit at the 15. It looked as though, looked as though Higgins had some room, but all of a sudden, Jimmy LeClaire came firing through from the corner to drive him down. You notice all the blocking uh, on that play was going to the outside buzz. They had a wall of blockers blocking out, but there was nobody uh, picking them off as uh, the flow was coming across from the inside. Good play by Art Warren. He's the one that held up the, uh, the blocking on that side. Back to throw and being hit for a loss of the yard or two. Linton, the safety, made the uh, tackle. And he made it in the backfield. Well, if that was a pass play and the safety made the tackle, let's, <laughs> let's hope he doesn't get a chance to get it off. <laughs> Sa safety blitz. As far as Guyton is concerned. Mm. Mike Farnham on to attempt the field goal from the 21-yard line. He has three on the season. This one against the wind does not have the legs to make it. So the drive goes awry at uh, the Gardner 16-yard line. And the Tigers will take over at their 20-yard line. Hence to go in a game that has been dominated by the offenses. Gardner leads by virtue of a one-yard touchdown plunge. That by uh, LeClaire after a 55-yard drive. First time the Tigers had their hands on the ball. Dorsky added the extra point. LeClaire trying to take it outside. I hit four. 
Saban on the stop. That'll be the end of the first quarter play with a score. The Gardner Tigers seven and the Coney Rams nothing. We'll be back with the second quarter after this. Locally owned, full service, the only choice. For nearly 100 years, Augusta Fuel Company has been giving people a choice, a choice that includes 24-hour emergency service provided by our own service personnel, an opportunity to choose a local company with a commitment to its customers and to the community. For fuel oil when you need it, for full service, call on your neighbors at Augusta Fuel Company, 4 Northern Avenue in Augusta. Al's Pizza in Augusta aims to please. That's why they have extra large servings at extra low prices. The Coney Gardner football specials this week are a large ham, cheese, and bacon sandwich for only $1.49 or a regular dough 10-inch cheese pizza for just $1.59. So stop by and see how Al's can please you with pizza, Italians, hot or cold sandwiches, and all the fixings. Eat in or call ahead and take it out. That's Al's Pizza, 256 State Street in Augusta. Dial 623-8599. 7-0 lead and has just staved off a Coney threat at the Gardner 20 yard line. So the Tigers with their second offensive possession last time uh, they moved the ball for the TD as we mentioned. Dorsky is split wide to the left. On a wing to the right side Earl Harvey. And they give it up the middle and Bergeron has some room and bursts for almost 10 yards. It's going to be a Gardner It'll be very close to first down yardage, gain of 10. And once again, the chains will be brought on. First down, Gardner. It is a guide to first down. Game by Elves Pizza on State Street in Augusta and by Augusta Fuel. Bergeron and LeClaire running with authority behind some crisp blocking by this Gardner offensive line. Nothing doing on that play, though, as LeClaire stopped at the line of scrimmage. First man to get through and hold him up uh, for Coney was Mark Malcolm. Tremendous crowd on hand at Gardner. Surrounding the complex here. Second down at nine. Filling the fire banking. Ball is just over the 30-yard line. And filling up the nearby playground. LeClaire still on his feet. Finally down as he gets over the 35 to the 37. Sean White on the play. For Coney. And John O'Brien in on stop also. We have ten and a half minutes to go, second quarter. Tigers lead it by seven to nothing. Leclerc, big hole, left tackle. He's not stopped until he got to the safety. Tiger hat. Gain of nine and a guy to first down at the 45. Well, Coney's going to have to do something defensively to stop the Gardner's offense because they have been able to move the football uh, whenever they've had the, the ball, which is twice. LeClaire slowed down by Saban momentarily. Burns on the play to finish him off. It'll be a two-yard pickup for the Tigers. Second and eight from the Gardner 47. LeClaire with blockers left side, cuts it outside, gets some good uh, downfield blocking. Jim lost his footing, and we have a flag down. Glenn Gervais making the play. It's like a hold against Gardner. Well, the Tigers had some people out front that time, and they were throwing blocks. 
LeClaire lost his footing. Lost his footing. Uh, he might have been gone for uh, some real big yardage. Of course, the flag negates everything now. Holding against the Tigers. That'll send it back to the guy to 38. And leave the Tigers with a second down and 16. As uh, Gardner moves against the wind this second quarter. Second down and 16. As we move on to the nine minute mark to go in the half. Harvey on a slot left. They give it up the middle to uh, Bergeron. Bergeron with a move. And Andy Bergeron to the 42 of Tony. And a first down. 18 yard burst by Andy Bergeron up the middle. Well, I think as we've seen uh, a standard ploy for the Tigers as they've come out and worked the middle against the 6-2 Coney defense. And that's one of the, uh, of course, one of the uh, negatives of the 6-2 defense is there's no linebacker in the middle. And uh, Gardner has exploited that uh, effectively the first half of this ball game. They play again. again. Trap up the middle. Bergeron. It's downfield blocking. Gets close to the 30-yard line. And that'll be a 12-yard gain and another Gardner first down. Sure, Coach Peterson and Coney's going to have to um, do something about the 6-2 in the middle. Either that or have his linebackers cheat inside. Now that's stacking up the middle, and Gardner goes wide, but no running room for LeClaire as he's picked off Sean White on the play. And also number 57 uh, over there for Coney. A good uh, defensive play by Dave Meager, the defensive left tackle. Is second down and 11 to go for the Tigers, who lead it 7 to nothing. This drive started back at the guy to 20. LeClaire slashes to the 29-yard line. Dave Colvin, number 50, on the play. Got about three. It'll be a third down, 7 to go for the Tigers. Big third down play now for Gardner. They have thrown the ball once, and that was complete to Warren for 14 yards on that first drive. Then we'll see if the Tigers put it in the air. Now they go inside, and Burns is waiting for Andy Bergeron. Bergeron's inside the 25 to the 24. Gain of three will be a fourth down and four to go. I'll make it three to go. We have a fourth down and three. Balls at about the 20. That's about the first time, Buzz, they really stopped that uh, fullback trap inside. No, he did. He got uh, he got his hands on him at the line of scrimmage, but uh, Bergeron still picked up about three or four yards after he was hit. This time they give it to Clay a left tackle, upended, short of the 20-yard line. He does not have, uh, I don't believe he has the first down yardage, and the Rams have taken over on downs at the 22-yard line. The 23-yard line as the Tigers end up a yard short. So the Coney D rises to the occasion and shut down the Tigers after Gardner had driven some uh, 52 yards from their own 20-yard line, or 62 yards. First and 10 about 6.25 to go in the second period. They give it to uh, Higgins, and Art Higgins has maybe three grudging yards. McClaire out of the secondary to make the hit. Warren was there, and Earl Harvey, the inside backer, was there also for the Tigers. Bobby Porter in the Coney backfield, replacing Devin Saban. As they'll run with, uh, they'll go with wide receivers. Burns is the man to watch on uh, this play. He likes to go to the sideline or across the middle. They hand it inside, and... Uh, Ball carries Higgins. Don Jewett is having a real strong game here in the first half. Makes his fourth uh, tackle of the first half.
Bergeron leads the Gardner defenders in the, with tackles at 65. Third and three, big play for the Rams. They want to keep their hands on the football. Higgins has stopped uh, for perhaps a loss on the play, and it was Andy Bergeron, the first man to get to him and slow him down. So, Coney forced uh, to kick the ball away with five minutes to go in this first half and time enough for Gardner to be able to uh, put another drive together. Coleman with the following win. Line of scrimmage will be the 33 for the Rams. Harvey and LeClaire deep for the Tigers. High kick. It's going to be Cloutier. Loses control. Trying to pick it up. Ball loose on the ground. And Cloutier in the end zone. Can't control and finally does. That'll be a touchback. That'll go out to the 20-yard line. Oof. Or is that going to be a safety? No. Coney wants a safety. No. The impetus, is, the impetus of the kick put the ball in the end zone. I believe they're going to take I it to the don't know. This is a, this is a this is a tricky call because uh, I'm sure Gardner recovered it. But Gardner the, recovered it, but uh, yeah, it'll be a touchback and it'll be the 20 yard line. The Gardner will take over. Oh, that's uh, that's that's a tough call because uh, the receiver back there trying to kick the ball up, he did kick it, and that's what Coney's trying to claim on the other side right now that he kicked the ball. Inadvertently, of course. But well, whatever is going to be uh, Gardner's ball, first and ten on their own twenty. Boy, that was almost a Coney touchdown. That, it was. That, luckily, Claudio was able to, to uh, land on the ball in the end zone, and it almost bounced away from him. And then he uh, reached out and swiped it in again. I give it to Harvey uh, his first carry on the counter, and he gets uh, maybe two, perhaps three yards. Saban on the play for Coney as Pollen comes into the ball game at a defensive tackle for the Rams and Rock Rollins goes out. Aaron Cloutier now into the uh, in as a linebacker replacing Saban. Straight up the middle goes Bergeron. Bergeron uh, Ridden down, Perez on the tackle. John White also there, the defensive left end. Gain of two, it'll be a third down and four. 340 to go in the first half as the Tigers lead it by seven to nothing. LeClaire, a one-yard run after a 55-yard Gardner drive on their opening possession. Harvey split wide left. Harvey in motion. Leclerc straight ahead. Stood up. Stopped. Ball goes loose, but it had been whistled dead. He might have a yard. The Tiger punting team will be on once again. And Dave Linton to do the kicking against the wind. So this will be an adventure against this wind. Tiger Hatch standing at about the Coney 40-yard line. That's You'll the best. probably have to come up a little bit to catch this one with the way the wind is blowing. That was the best defensive series for the Coney Rams. Block ball is blocked by Pollen, and it'll be Coney football at the Gardner 17-yard line as Dan Pollen, number 99, came through number and blocked it. The punt, and the recovery uh, makes no difference as Coney, on that fourth down play, has taken over at the Gardner 18-yard line. And that comes at 2.44 to go in the first half here at Hoke Field. So the first uh, big break of the ball game in Coney's favor, and we'll see if the Rams can do something with it. Golden the split wide left, saving a wing back to the right. Going to throw with no room, and finally just throwing it away is Dameron. Good, lucky to be able to get rid of it. The big rush was put on. McKenzie and Blair Tinkham. Tinkham from his right end position and McKenzie from his defensive left tackle position. Well, that rollout, Buzz, is not going to work for Coney because 
Uh, Dameron just has no time when he rolls out uh, to throw. Well, that's a, tough, that's a tough play with a right-handed quarterback trying to roll left and throw across his body. Burns is lined up on the right side. We'll keep an eye on him, but they give it to uh, Higgins. Higgins slowed up and finally put away. Dinkum did a good job of slowing him up. And then Hudson came on to put him away. Bob Weeks replaces Craig Marshall at nose guard for the Tigers with a minute 52 to go. Third down, eight to go from the 15. On the counter to Saban, he stood up immediately. Good job by Harvey, the linebacker, Earl Harvey, to fill the hole on the counter and stop him right at the line of scrimmage. It'll be a fourth down and eight for the Rams. Tony Taimo. Time out, and we'll take time in for this message. Add more, save more, do more. There are some good reasons to purchase a Macintosh Plus or Apple IIGS from Capital Computers. Purchase a Macintosh Plus by January 2nd and get up to $200 cash back on select Macintosh add-ons. Add-ons like an ImageWriter 2 printer, an external 3.5-inch disk drive, or an Apple 20-megabyte hard disk. The more you add, the more capabilities you have, and you'll save more, too. Visit Capital Computers, 154 Water Street, Augusta. Shaw's presents fruits and vegetables so remarkably fresh, so naturally sweet, they almost speak for themselves. Shaw's, the time is ripe. Well, Coney faced uh, with a big fourth down eight and the field goal attempt from the 20 yard line by Mike Farnham. The kick is on its way. It's good. And it's seven. No, oh, it's no good. We were looking at the official in the uh, back of the end zone who signaled good, but the referee uh, behind the kicker signals no good. Now we're going to have a discussion. And it's no good after a discussion by the official. Jeff DuBois had signaled it was good from behind the goalpost. But I thought, too. And then uh, the referee Frank Barkley behind the kicker signaled no good. Then they had a discussion and came to the conclusion the kick did not, uh, was no good. So Gardner takes over at the 20-yard line as Coney was unable to uh, take advantage of that uh, blocked punt by Dan Pollock. Minute 20 to go in the first half. Gardner with control of the football now. Tigers lead by seven to nothing. Sternet calling signal. A play. Slants off left tackle. And Billy Carras at the bottom of the pile. Gain of three, it'll be a second down, seven. Down to 49 seconds to play in the first half. Got him with a second and eight. LeClaire to the right side. Good solid tackle by Greg Burns. He got help from Devin Saban. Saban went out momentarily and Aaron Cloutier came in. But uh, Saban is back in there now at inside linebacker. Coney has called a timeout with 33 seconds to go as the Tigers I have a third down and five to go. The Rams are hoping they can get the ball back with just a little bit of time left on the clock. It's third and five. I would doubt if you'd see the uh, Tigers put the ball in the air right in this particular situation. I think they'll run one more play. And then uh, if they don't get the first down, be content to kick it away. On the chains on the far side. Sonny Gamash, 31 years. 
He hasn't missed He's a game. on the chains and has not missed a home game at Chicago. <laughs> That's got to be some kind of a record. He's a Quimby Fielder here at uh, the Hulk Field Complex. He does a little coaching, a little officiating over there, too, I think, doesn't he? Well, doesn't everybody? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like anybody it. that does <laughs> You're right, Dave. You're right. So we have a third down, four to go for the Tigers. Keeping a stern at rolling. And he's hit down just short of the first down at the 29. And a flag is down. Good solid hit again by Greg Burns. That's what you call a form tackle. Twenty-six seconds showing on the board. And this will stop the clock. But it will give Gardner another down to operate with and run the clock down. The big one, though. Personal foul against the Tigers. Third down and 16. Line. Third and 16 with 21 seconds to go. And the clock is running. And Coney calls another timeout with 14 seconds to go. Coney lost some time on the clock by not calling timeout earlier. Gadner, after Coney uh, failed to Moved the football in their first possession. Gardner took over at their own 45 and drove 55 yards for the touchdown. But Claire got it on a one-yard uh, drive up the middle as he dove over the uh, pile to score. And really, Gardner's first drive, it's been the key plays were, uh, were uh, Andy Bergeron, some good, strong running up the middle, and the, then LeClaire slanting off the tackles to uh, pick up good yardage, and a big 14-yard pass play to Brett Warren from Rob Sternard, and that's uh, the damage that the Tigers have done so far. That's been the only score in the game. The Coney Rams have tried a couple of field goals, uh, one coming up short, one going wide. Their biggest play was the block punt by Dan Pollen, but uh, they couldn't capitalize on that. Sternard just goes uh, to the ground on the snap, and the clock is running with eight seconds to go, and that should be it for the first half. With the Gardner Tigers leading the Coney Rams in an excellent ball game, just as uh, we thought it would be. These two teams very even. Seven for Gardner, nothing for Coney. And we'll be back with a resume of the statistics of the first people. That's what Gardner Savings Institution, FSB, has been doing for over 150 years helping people to get the most out of their assets with home equity loans. Loans that let you use the equity in your home to buy a new car, provide for an education, make home improvements conveniently at extremely favorable rates. Stop it at any office of Gardner Savings Institution and let our friendly people help you. Gardner Savings Institution, member FDIC, offering safe savings for over a century and a half. Where are they? Are they still here? Look at all these darn trees and shrubs. First the flood, now this. There it is. Wingate Lathe is still in the oil business. Meanwhile, inside... Hello, Wingate Lathe Oil Company. Yes, we're still in the oil business. In fact, we've expanded our service department, and we still match the prevailing cash oil price. No, the Jolly Green Giant doesn't work here. Wingate Lathe Oil, Hollowell. At halftime at Hoke Field, it's Gardner 7 and Coney nothing as the Gardner band comes off the field after a scintillating performance at halftime. And here's Buzz with the first half stat. Buzz? Dave, I thought going into this halftime that the uh, stats would be quite even, but uh, they're really not as even as I thought they were going to be. And the difference has been Andy Bergeron. In the first half of the Coney Rams, 25 offensive plays. They rushed the ball 18 times for a total of 64 yards. Put the ball in the air three times, completed none. 
So in the first half, the Coney Rams had a total of 64 yards of offense. For the Gardner Tigers, 28 offensive plays. They rushed the ball 26 times for a total of 123 yards. They put the ball in the air one time, completed that one pass for 13 yards, so 136 yards of total offense for the Gardner Tigers in the first half, 136 to 64. Individually, we expected the Art Higgins and Jim LeClaire show, and we got uh, some of that in the first half, as Jim LeClaire had 16 carries for 56 yards. Art Higgins for the Coney Rams had 10 carries for uh, 36 yards. And the leading ball carry in the first half was Andy Bergeron with eight carries for 65 yards. The one scoring drive the Coney, the, the, the Coney Rams gave up to the Gardner Tigers was Gardner's first possession in the, in the first half. And that was a 55-yard drive with Bergeron starting it off with uh, the first three carries of the ball game, picking up 21 yards. The big play right in the middle of it after Coney had a third down and long and a five-yard penalty. Put the ball in the air the one time. Rob Sternard completed that to Art Warren for a first down, and then Jim LeClaire took over and uh, with one 17-yard run, taking it down to the one-yard line, and then on the next play, he took it over for the only score of the game with 6.01 left in the first quarter. Okay, and I think we saw Gardner exploit the weaknesses of the 6-2 defense in the person of uh, Andy Bergeron as they were able to open up some pretty gaping holes inside that 6-2 with a linebacker spread. Coney adjusted to that and moved their linebackers in and uh, cut down on their splits in the defensive line, but by then, the Tigers had posted a touchdown and have the lead at 7 to nothing. It's been a good ball game throughout the first half, and uh, Coney tried a couple of passes, didn't complete them. Gardner's a uh, Big pass, as you mentioned, a 14-yarder on that drive to Warren to keep it alive on a third and 11. And that's where we stand at uh, the halftime here as Gardner leads uh, Coney 7 to nothing, and the Tigers will be receiving as we start the second half uh, if they choose to do so. They may choose the wind as they did in the first half and uh, get uh, give Coney possession. We'll wait and find out. So we'll be back after this message. Would you choose hamburger A, a Wendy's hamburger that's made fresh, or B, one made earlier so it's dry? B, it's like Mom's. I remember she'd make dry roast beef, dry gravy, cake, but most people don't like dry food. Yeah? Maybe that's why Dad left. <laughs> most people like the taste of hot and juicy hamburgers, like Wendy's, the best burgers in the business. Wendy's makes a great gift for the holidays. Wendy's gift certificates. Good year round. A booklet of ten is just $5. Now available at participating Wendy's. The folks at Augusta Lumber present your pal Al, the building bug. Here's a good buy. Choose Marillac cabinetry and you'll choose the kitchen you've always wanted. Meadow Oak Cathedral features a hand wiped furniture quality finish. Oak frames, slide out trays, and wipe clean interiors. See Meadow Oak Cathedral and Marillac's complete line of convenience accessories today. Marillac, I know. At Augusta Lumber, Western Avenue, Augusta, and Main Street, Lewiston. Okay, they have uh, met at midfield. Gardner has elected to kick off the second half. Coney will receive to the right of your screen, and once again, Coney will have a chance to, to move first on offense, but Gardner has that all-important wind to their backs here in the third quarter. They were able to use it to uh, advantage in the first quarter and score a touchdown. And Gardner leads it seven to nothing. Anybody's ball game, the Tigers right now have dominated play as far as the offensive statistics go. Uh, but Coney's had a couple of opportunities, one that fizzled at the 20-yard line and then a blocked punt that they were unable to move in from the guy to 17. Short kick at the 32, Cloutier. Cloutier fights his way to the 40. Yard line, an eight-yard return. Craig Marshall, the first man down to make the play for the Tigers. So the Rams find themselves trailing by seven to nothing and trying to figure a way to move that football. They've only put the ball in the air twice. A look in attempt to uh, Burns that uh, was overthrown and then a pass that was short intended for Saban on the left uh, sideline. Straight ahead and nowhere. 
for the Rams. Goes the Cloutier. Uh, Eric Smith, rather. Number 32, Andy Bergeron. Gain of one is now second down and nine. So it'll be a two-yard pickup. Second down, eight to go at the 41-yard line. Looking over the middle, complete to Burns. A lot of traffic there. Bergeron almost got a hand on it, but the big man, Greg Burns, went up and hauled it in while the first completion... That'll be a gain of about four. It'll be a third down, three to go. Hudson on the tackle for Gardner. So the Rams put the ball in the air early here in the second half on the look-in variety. Back to throw again. Throws over the middle and complete. And we're going to have a flag down. Bergeron was there defending. And it was intended for Burns once again. Same play. And Andy Bergeron was right in the middle of it as he had been in the last play. This one was thrown a little lower, but the flag went down. It looks like defensive interference. So Coney starting at their 39. Right, have advanced uh, to the Gardner 29. Now Coney at first down. Pass in the third. Coney have the ball first and ten. Inside the 40-yard line. So now, Coney in Gardner territory. 39, a 15-yard penalty pass interference. Marched off against the Tigers. Bobby Ford a split wide to right side. Eric Smith uh, crunches to the 32. Harvey on the bottom of the pile. Well, Smith hit the hole very hard for the Rams. And very quickly, Eric Smith. First time we've seen Eric Smith run out of the tailback. Perez is the fullback. They give it to Smith, and he's uh, drilled down after maybe a yard. And it was Greg McKenzie, the defensive tackle, that made the hit. Porter split out wide to the left side again. Keeping. And being hit for a loss is Dameron. LeClaire came up strong on the corner. And also McKenzie was there for the Tigers. McKenzie and... Uh, playing a good job at the defensive tackle as is Don Jewett, the other defensive tackle. And LeClaire, of course, on the corner in on a lot of plays also. He has been all year. So at 8.45 to go, Coney faced with a big fourth down and four situation. Ball is loose on the snap and uh, it'll be Gardner football. A flag is down. It's going to be a uh, guy in the football, but the flag was down. We haven't seen the on signal the on the penalty. The well, maybe it was an inadvertent uh, flag. <laughs> anyway, it's guy in the football at the guy in the 33-yard line. It's Coney unable to move the ball. Claire. It's a lot of resistance on the right side of the defensive line. It's three. It'll be a second down and seven. Rock Rollins on the hit for Coney. Aaron Claudia checks in for Earl Harvey in the Gardner attack and wingback. With 7.47 to go third quarter. 
game brought to you in part by Transco and Capital Computers. Happy to be among your sponsors for the big rivalry, Dad McConaughey. Stern at the throw has plenty of time, all kinds of time, along the right side line of Dorsky. Dorsky to midfield. And a 19-yard pickup to the 48 of Coney. So Sternard is two for two. 14 to Warren in the first half, and now 19 to Dorsky in this half, and he had all kinds of time to throw the ball. There was no penetration at all by the Coney defense as they ran it off the running fake. So the Tigers will go to work at the Coney 47-yard line. Tony really stacking that 6-2 uh, inside. Good blocking again. Sternard has it picked off by Hatch. Tiger Hatch at uh, the 40 to the 40 function of the year for Rob Sternard. And Hatch timed that perfectly out of his uh, safety position. Picked it off on the dead run and returned it to midfield. That was about a 15-yard interception return. And the line. Well, that's one way to really... Put a screeching halt to a drive, and uh, Hatch did it, and he did it effectively. It was a beautiful, uh, beautiful time out now with uh, 6.40 to go, and we'll take time in for this message. What would you rather be doing, this or this? Make the right choice. Choose sharp typewriters. If you get a chance, go down to Chance Go and check out the new 325 Sharp Typewriter. $100 off for this and also $100 worth of ribbons free. Joey and Ryan, Water Street, Augusta. Al's Pizza in Augusta aims to please. That's why they have extra large servings at extra low prices. The Coney Gardner Football Special. This week, a ham, cheese, and bacon sandwich for only $1.49. Or a regular dough 10-inch cheese pizza for just $1.59. So stop by and see how Al's can please you with pizza, Italians, hot or cold sandwiches, and all the fixings. Eat in or call ahead and take it out. That's Al's Pizza, 256 State Street in Augusta. Dial 623-8599. Coney on first down, and straight ahead goes Smith for maybe a yard. Ivy was the first man to make contact. Coney. And then uh, Don Jewett put him away. It'll be a second down, nine to go. The ball at the Gardner, 49-yard line. Gain of one is now second down and nine. The ball is just inside the 50-yard line. Coney with the football by virtue of Tiger Hatch's fourth interception of the year. And it was a thing of beauty. Driving over the right side for a couple. Once again, a Smith. Harvey there. McClare is there. Well, we don't know the uh, status of our Higgins. He's on, he's on the far sideline. Right? But he has not uh, come out and played in this second half, and Eric Smith has run out of tailback on both uh, Coney possessions. 5.34 to go, third quarter. Lobbing left side, the catch is made by Vashon, Mike Vashon. And that's enough for the first down at the 39-yard line. So that'll be an eight-yard gain and a first down. Is that uh, ball against the wind was floated up there by Dameron. But uh, Vashon went up to get it. Came back to get the ball, which a good receiver will. And... Now the Rams have completed a couple of passes here in the second half. Porter now is split wide the left. Burns is the end on the right side. Straight up the middle, they go to Karaz. He bowls his way to the 35-yard line. Jewett is there again, and the nose guy Craig Marshall got a piece of him. Gain of four, it'll be second down six. Bill Pullen, number 89, 160-pound junior, checks in at this left end. 
for the Rams, and Porto will be a wing back to the right. Passing uh, situation for Coney. They give it to Smith. Smith gets to the 31. It'll be a four-yard gain. It'll be a third down and two. Jewett uh, makes the stop. He's been in on a lot of them uh, today for the Tigers, the defensive left tackle. And he was aided and embedded by Andy Bergeron, the inside linebacker. Don Golden, number 24, in for Coney at end. Carrying a play. From coach Ralph Peterson. Big third down play for the Rams. Left side and short of the 30 yard line. Number 33, Eric Smith. So Coney. So Coney will be short by a yard or two. It'll be fourth down and a couple of yards to go. Greg McKenzie, the defensive right tackle, on the play for Con Gardner. McKenzie and Marshall, along with Don Jewett, have done a great job on that Gardner interior defensive line. Fourth and two. Smith is going to be close. Depends on where they spot the football. As he got over the 30, but uh, he may be short. It appears uh, he is, and Gardner will take over. So 3.02 to go, third quarter. First and 10, inside the 30 yard line. And the Tigers, once again, are shot off a Coney drive. Coney has had drive stall at the 17, the 21, and now. For 29. Turn it on the call. Gives up the middle of Bergeron. Bergeron still on his feet as he pounds into the secondary and gets to the 43. Mark Malcolm finally made the tackle in the secondary. Not before he got to the 43 and a 14 yard pickup. Big pile up there in the middle. But nobody had, a, had their hands on the Bergeron. Just a lot of people milling around, and all of a sudden Bergeron broke out of the pack for 14 yards. Tigers at the 44. LeClaire on the sweep. Has some blockers. Cuts inside and gets to the 49. At about five. Saban over, arranges over to make the tackle. He's well over the 100 yard, 100 uh, tackle mark for the season now. And among the leaders, as we mentioned, in the Pine Tree Conference. Very quick moving third quarter buzz as uh, we're down to a minute 45 to go. It has no scoring, not very many penalties, basically keeping the ball on the ground. Second and five, LeClaire. First up the middle for three. It'll be a third down and two. Burns on the hit for Coney. And also the defensive left tackle, Dave Meager. Number 57. Third down and one, the ball's at about the 42-yard line. Third and one at the 42. About one minute to go in the third quarter. Third and one, if Coney's in that 6-2, but they're uh, spreading it out a little bit now. They weren't running it inside. LeClaire has the first down as he picks up a couple. Greg Burns on the tackle. Along with Gervais, the defensive right end. And the 50 seconds to go in the third quarter with the Tigers leading at 7-0. Nobody has really threatened in this uh, quarter, although Coney did get to the guy in 29. Harvey on a wing to the right side. Stern it to throw, and he has good blocking. Gets it away, complete at the 30. Wide open at Warren. Number 
So a 15-yard gain on the first down for the Tigers. Now the same pass pattern that they used on that first the drive of the game where they uh, bring Warren over from the left side across the middle and he's able to shake clear as he comes across the middle and was wide open that time. He's been open uh, both times they've run that pattern. Claire slowed up, finally stopped. First man to slow him up was uh, Malcolm, the defensive right tackle. Rock Rollins put him away. That's the end of the third quarter. Gardner seven, Coney nothing. We're down to the final 12 minutes after this. Systems in Hollowell guide you step by step through the printing process. They help you design and create a letterhead or business forms, which are a true reflection of your company. Letter Systems uses state-of-the-art equipment to provide the best quality, from posters and pamphlets to business cards and wedding invitations. And for your copying needs, there's the Copy Stop. Offset quality at photocopy price. High tech, high speed, high quality. The best people and equipment are ready to help you at Letter Systems Incorporated of Hollowell. Augusta Fuel Company delivers. Locally owned and operated, Augusta Fuel Company delivers full service, including 24-hour emergency plumbing and heating services, automatic delivery, cash price or credit terms, and you don't have to be at home when we deliver. Make the right choice, the only choice. Augusta Fuel Company, 4 Northern Avenue, Augusta. Guidon with a second and eight. Ball at the 29-yard line of Coney. Up the middle of the trap, uh, Bergeron gets good daylight and gets to the 23-yard line. Rock Rollins on the tackle. Gain of about five. It'll be third down three for Gardner. Very crucial drive for the Tigers because if they can uh, keep this one going, get into the end zone, it's going to be tough and uphill for Coney. Uh, down by two. And right now, Gardner in a good position to do that at the 23. Big third down three, though, coming up. LeClaire, the right side. Short of the first down by a yard, a gain of three. It'll be a fourth down about a yard to go. Devin Saban on the tackle for the Rams. Now it looks like uh, fourth down and a couple of yards to go. Brings up a fourth down and one. The ball's at the 21-yard line. Fourth and one at the 21. LeClaire has the first down as he battles his way. Breaking tackles to get it at the 19-yard line. Good job, hard job of running as Dan Fallon got into the backfield and was the first man to hit him. But he broke off the uh, tackle. And just uh, picked up the first down as he got over the line. Good job of strong running by LeClaire to do it. He did it pretty much on his own. 10.28 to go, final quarter. Tigers lead it, 7 zip. Number 24, Jim LeClaire just about back to the line of scrimmage. Perez is there for the Rams along with David Coleman. Tigers lost the yard, it'll be a second down 11. Good defensive play by the right side of that uh, Coney defense. Second and 11, Harvey on a wing to the right side. They go to Bergeron. Saban picks it up, but not before he gets to the 16-yard line for a five-yard game. It'll be a third down, six to go for the Tigers, and they get a third down, seven. So big third down play in seven now third coming. Down 
Harvey split uh, wide to the left. Turn it to throw. And it's incomplete. Ed Warren, ball was down low. He had to turn and come back, bend down for it, and couldn't hold on at the 10. So the Tigers now go to a fourth down and seven from the 17 yard line. And a very big play in this ball game. They are operating against the wind. And we have 9.06 to go. The Tigers um, probably will go to the air for it. Turn it, looking deep. And Tanner Fedorsky incomplete. No flags on the play, and the Rams have held, and they'll take over. And a very big defensive stand it was for Coney. Because that insurance touchdown, potential insurance touchdown for Gardner, would have been a biggie. As we're in a veritable blizzard here. Of confetti. Confetti by the Gardner fans. Coney will take over first and 10 at the 16 yard line. I'm wondering why all the confetti is thrown and when Coney held on that play. Dameron. Back to throw, has time. Deep over the middle. Complete the Porter at midfield. 33 yards strike to Bobby Porter at midfield for the Rams. And they're in business now. Just in the Gardner territory with 8.52 to go. That ball was thrown right on the money above. Perfect. Beautiful, beautifully thrown pass. Dameron was under a bit of a rush, too, by the guy in the defensive line, but managed to get that one up there. Knew where uh, Porter was supposed to be. And a little wide receiver made no mistake with it. Flashing straight ahead. All right, Higgins is back in the ball game now for the first time in the second half. So Higgins is now a tailback. Eric Smith ran out of the tailback slot all through the third quarter for the Rams. Well, a perfect strike by the sophomore quarterback Dameron to Bobby Porter, the wide receiver. And the 33-yard gain sets the Rams up at the Gardner now, the 45. Straight ahead for a couple. Goes Higgins. Bergeron and Harvey, the inside back, are still to make the play. Gain of only one. It'll be a third down, four to go. Third down and four on the ball instead of a four. So now the Rams are faced with a big play because they need to keep possession of the football at this stage with 7.43 to go. Out of the power eye. Rolling the right with time. The pass is incomplete. Overthrown. Intended for Saban. Well overthrown by Dameron. And it'll be a fourth down for the Rams. Well, Buzz, what do you do now? Pond or try to keep possession? 735, I think you've got to kick it, try to get uh, the Tigers back deep. And try to hold it. Plus, you have that following wind, which would give you a pretty good punch situation. But the Rams are going to go for They're it. They're going to go. On a fourth down and four. Dameron rolling again. Dameron keeping. He's going to have Dameron the has the first, first down. down. Well, he saw some room and figured he could get the first down and did. He needed four and he got about six. And a first down at the 37 yard line. I make it the 38 yard line of Gardner. So the Rams uh, managed to uh, take a chance on fourth down. And the sophomore quarterback, Mike Dameron, came up with a very big play. He was looking for Burns, I believe, on the square out to the right side, but just couldn't find him. Higgins battles his way inside the 30. Five to the 34. Hudson, the uh, linebacker on the tackle. Rams trying to keep a drive going with 6.45 to go in the ballgame, and they trail by one. 
Saban. Draws the crowd on the counter. That'll be a third down five. Picked up a yard on the play. Bergeron, among others, on the play. A lot of Tigers were there, though. Third down and five. The ball is about the 33 yard line. Porter, who made that uh, big play a few moments ago, is wide to the right side. Split wide left is Golden. Straight ahead is Higgins. Higgins, second Air Force, gets him close to first down yardage. Spun away from a couple of tackles and kept driving for that extra yard. He's going to be short by about a yard. So once again, Coney with a fourth down situation. Instead of fourth and four, it's fourth and a yard. Well, I'm sure if we know who it's going to go to. Probably Higgins driving right up straight, but it's a quarterback sneak, and we're going to have a flag, and that's going to be on Karaz for driving into the ball carrier and moving him forward, aiding the, the ball carrier from behind. And you can't do that. That was quite an obvious call. Perez just drove into the back of his quarterback and drove him forward. He might have had it anyway, but uh, saw the penalty. It'll still be fourth down, but now it'll be a fourth down about five. We'll see what the Rams do. They went to the pass on a fourth and four last time. Cameron, the throw. Big rush put on. Sideline incomplete. Way overthrow. It was intended for Bobby Porter. But it was well overthrown, and the Tigers will take over. So a very costly penalty against the Rams turns the ball over to the Tigers. And that comes with 5-10 to go in the ball game. There's your arm with daylight. First down. 12-yard pickup. Malcolm had to tackle him from behind. Also over out of the secondary was John O'Brien. So if the Tigers can put a drive together, they can hang on to this one. Penalty against the Rams, uh, encroachment. So again, we'll go first and five. We'll take a break and be right back with more Coney Gardner after this. presents fruits and vegetables so remarkably fresh, so naturally sweet, they almost speak for themselves. Shaw's, the time is ripe. The folks at Augusta Lumber present your pal Al, the building bug. Here's a goodbye. Choose Merrillac Cabinetry and you'll choose the kitchen you've always wanted. 
Meadow Oak Cathedral features a hand-wiped furniture quality finish, oak frames, slide-out trays, and wipe clean interiors. See Meadow Oak Cathedral and Marilat's complete line of convenience accessories today. I know. At Augusta Lumber, Western Avenue, Augusta, and Main Street, Lewiston. First and five for the Tigers after the five-yard penalty against uh, Coney. LeClaire drives into Coney territory at the 46. Saban over to make the play. So with four minutes to go in the ball game, the Tigers have a first down in Coney territory. Seven to nothing, the Tigers lead. They scored in the first quarter and have held on since then. There's your on hit and stop. Pollen was there defensively for the Rams, and Greg Burns also got a piece of him. Loss of Yad will be second down 11. Clock continues to tick with three and a half minutes to go. Should the Tigers hold on and win, they will play the second uh, place team from the Northern Division next week here at Oak Field, which will be the winner of the Lawrence Winslow game, which is probably over now. They had a one o'clock start. McClare, nice tackle by Dave Coleman. Picture perfect tackle by Coleman at about the 50. So the Tigers lose a couple of more yards as third down 13. As we go inside the three-minute mark to go in the ball game, so Coney uh, has the wind of their backs, and if they can hold out on these next two plays, they can get one more shot at it. But time is of the essence with 2:40 to go now. Dorsky split wide left along the sideline. Harvey a wing back, a uh, slot uh, to the left side. Bergeron bounces off one tackler, and then uh, he's set upon by the uh, linebacking crew. Sean White on the tackle. Carraz is there, and uh, Saban. So now, Coney takes the timeout to stop the clock with 2.22 to go, and the Tigers are faced with a fourth down 11, and the punting unit is on the field for the Tigers. Keep in mind that uh, the Tigers have already had one block punt in the bargain. Well, a punt now for Gardner should uh, put Coney pretty well down in their end of the field. The wind notwithstanding here. There isn't, there isn't too much time left. 2.22 left. Coney gets the ball back. They're going to have to put the ball in the air. That's a precious, precious, precious situation to put a young sophomore quarterback. So he's got some fine receivers in Porter and uh, Burns. Dan Pollen had uh, blocked one of Linton's punts uh, in the first half at the Gardner 17, but they couldn't uh, they couldn't do anything with it as uh, they were unable to move the ball from the Gardner 17 on it. So with 2.22 to go, line of scrimmage, the 48-yard line of Coney, Linton gets the punt away quickly, and a good one it is, angling for the far side. And Tiger Hatch uh, just going to watch it fall dead at the 21. So, about a 22-yard punt from the line of scrimmage. And Tony will take over with 2.08 to go in the ball game and 79 yards, or 78 yards away. And they will have to put the ball in the air, and the Tigers are going to be looking for it. Straight back. Good time. Deep left sideline. Overthrown and out of bounds. No flag. It was intended for Vashon, number 22, Mike Vashon. Good coverage was there, though. The Tigers hadn't covered all the way. Claudia. Right with him step to step on the uh, far sideline.
Coney hoping to, they went for the long one that time, Buzz. Uh, they did. I'm surprised they, they went that deep, but there's always a chance of uh, the interference call. And they run the ball, losing his footing and going down as uh, the tailback, uh, Keegan. That'll cost him some time on the clock. We go down to third down, eight to go, and one and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Foul, third down and eight. Tigers trying to pick up another Southern Division uh, Conference Championship. Burns uh, overthrown. He had Burns open for a minute, but it was overthrown, and uh, a lot of Orange Jersey defenders in the area. But he almost had uh, Burns with an opportunity to rebound that one. Down to a minute 12, the clock is stopped, and Coney with a fourth down and eight. Balls at about the 25 yard line, fourth and eight. Well, no punt here as Coney, uh, with only a minute 12 to go, will try to go for it. Rams having a little trouble with their passing game, but of course the Gardner Tigers are sitting back and they know uh, Tony's going to have to throw. They are, throw off a running fake over the middle, way overthrown, intercepted by Linton. Dave Linton picked up the interception, playing center field. His third interception in the last three games, uh, two games. So the Tigers will take over at the 45, and that should do it for the Tigers with 107 to go as they lead it 7 to nothing. Nice to get the interception, but if he'd have just knocked the ball down, God would have had the ball back on the gut on around the uh, Coney 25. The interception cost him 15 yards. Well, timeout has been called by Coney with 41 seconds to go in the ball game. But Gardner has possession of the football. And I think Coney has just one more time out. Correct. Ball is about the 43 yard line. Well, the Tigers picked up a, the scored their touchdown on their first possession of the ball game and they made it stand up as the defense has shut out the Rams. And Coney really hasn't threatened here in this uh, second half. They did three times in the first half. But the second half, uh, they haven't really been able to get too far. They did get to the guy in the 29 in the third quarter. So the Tigers have come in five and three, trying to an ex uh, Southern Division championship. The Rams had a shot at the championship that Bangor had beaten Oxford Hills today and uh, Tony beaten Gardner. But right now, that doesn't make any difference as the Tigers are in the driver's seat with a second and eight. LeClaire wrapped up. Coleman, another solid tackle for the Rams. We'll have timeout again called by the Rams. And that comes with 36 seconds to go. Gannon with a third down 11. And after the game, Buzz will uh, be by to bring you up to date on all the statistics of this classic uh, confrontation here at Hope Field. The teams came in uh, very even for the first time in quite a while. And the score indicates uh, how even they were. Although Gardner has a decided edge in the statistics, but uh, they don't count any points. The Rams uh, complete a very, very successful football season in spite of the four and five record if they're not able to come back. Turn it falls uh, to the turf. Clock is running. Coney has used all their timeouts, I believe. And Gardner may just let it wind down. We're not going to see another play by the Tigers. Way down to 10 seconds. As the crowd is counting off. 
half the time. Three, two, one. Well, the Tigers have done it again. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, delay a game. They had uh, used more than their allotted uh, 30 seconds of time. It should be one second left on the clock. Yeah, I thought it was around 32 or 31 when they... Uh, They'll have to snap the ball one more time. Well, that stops the clock, and that's the only way that really that uh, Coney could get to the clock stop was a guy in a penalty. They couldn't have uh, stopped it with the, if Guyton had run that play just before the uh, expiration of the 30 seconds. So this should use it up on a fourth down and two. And that's that'll do it. As the Tigers come away with the victory, six and three, Tony drops to four and five, and Gardner uh, with the victory, seven to nothing. As Jim LeClaire scored at the six minute mark to go in the first quarter, first time the Gardner Tigers had their hands on the football, they drove 55 yards, LeClaire from one yard out, key play was a 14 yard pass to uh, Warren from uh, Sternett, the quarterback. And some excellent running, of course, from uh, the fullback, Andy Bergeron, and as always, from Mr. Tailback, Jim LeClaire. So the Tigers win it 7-0, and it lived up to advance notice, a very evenly matched.